In an era where global power projection increasingly relies on naval supremacy, the advent of China's new aircraft carrier introduces a significant chapter in maritime military strategy. This development marks a pivotal moment in China's naval ambitions, aiming to contest the blue water dominance long held by the United States. At the heart of this naval rivalry lies a comparison between China's burgeoning aircraft carrier capabilities and the advanced technological fortress that is the USS Gerald R. Ford supercarrier. The USS Gerald R. Ford vs. China's Fujian carrier in a shocking naval power shift. While the USS Gerald R. Ford epitomizes American naval prowess with its nuclear propulsion and advanced operational systems, it is the lead ship of the Gerald R. Ford-class aircraft carriers. It was commissioned on July 22, 2017 and is currently undergoing post-shakedown availability at Newport News Shipbuilding in Virginia in preparation for its first deployment scheduled for 2024. China's Type 003 carrier, the Fujin, marks a significant step in China's naval ambitions with domestically developed technologies such as the electromagnetic catapult system. This technology represents a leap in aircraft launching capabilities, potentially narrowing the technological gap with its American counterpart. However, the Ford-class carrier's nuclear power provides unmatched endurance and operational range. Particularly, Gerald R. Ford-class carriers are equipped with two Bechtel A1 BPWR nuclear reactors, each capable of producing 300 megawatts of electricity. This allows the Ford-class carriers to have unlimited range and a 50-year service life, with the Navy expecting them to be part of the fleet for 90 years, until the year 2105, a critical advantage that China's conventionally powered Fujian does not match at this stage. The Gerald R. Ford's ability to accommodate as many as 90 aircraft, including advanced fifth-generation fighters, highlights the U.S. Navy's relentless pursuit of overwhelming aerial dominance. On the other hand, the Fujin, with a limited capacity of only 60 aircraft, of which merely 40 can be fighters, reflects China's constrained efforts to extend its military reach beyond its regional confines. Also, the integration of F-35C Lightning II into the USS Gerald R. Ford's wing represents not just a numerical advantage but a qualitative leap in air superiority. The F-35C's stealth capabilities, advanced sensors, and networking abilities enable it to serve as a force multiplier, enhancing the lethality and survivability of the carrier strike group. Meanwhile, China's Type 003 is expected to deploy the J-15 as a mainstay, which, despite planned upgrades, is not stealth capable and lacks the advanced avionics and electronic warfare capabilities of the F-35C. The deployment of this carrier within the People's Liberation Army Navy underscores China's aggressive aspirations to broaden its sphere of influence and operational capabilities, particularly in the contested Indo-Pacific region, raising concerns about escalating tensions and the militarization of the area. The Ford-class carrier's advanced features, such as electromagnetic catapults and potentially directed energy weapons, underscore the U.S. Navy's quest for technological superiority. While the Fujian is also equipped with electromagnetic catapults and has tested its domestically produced emuls, the USS Gerald R. Ford has been rigorously testing its emuls for years, with the Navy still working to optimize its performance. This disparity in testing progress suggests the Chinese system has considerable development work left. A critical examination of the USS Gerald R. Ford in China's Type 003 carrier. In an era where maritime supremacy is synonymous with national security and global influence, the stark contrasts between the United States' USS Gerald R. Ford and China's Type 003 aircraft carrier present a vivid tableau of strategic ambition versus technological shortfall. The USS Gerald R. Ford, with its behemoth-like presence, boasting a displacement of roughly 100,000 tons and stretching 333 meters in length, is a concrete manifestation of the U.S.'s doctrine of unparalleled power projection across the world's oceans. In contrast, China's Type 003, despite its considerable size with a displacement of about 80,000 tons and a length of 316 meters, falls conspicuously short of its American counterpart's monumental scale and capabilities, revealing a glaring disparity in maritime prowess. Also, the USS Gerald R. Ford is nuclear-powered which means they don't have to be refueled and can remain at sea indefinitely, unlike the China carrier, which needs refueling every 10,000 nautical miles. Furthermore, the USS Gerald R. Ford's design embodies a visionary approach to naval warfare, with its capacity to embrace emerging technologies such as directed energy weapons and electromagnetic railguns, ensuring its dominance in the face of rapidly evolving military technology.
This forward-thinking design ethos starkly contrasts with the Type 003's conventional approach, which not only limits its future upgradability but also risks rendering it obsolete as technological advancements in naval warfare accelerate. Particularly, the Type 003 is suspected to be equipped with integral defensive weapons, including air defense missile pods and close-in weapon systems, for close-in weapon systems guns that can fire 3,000 rounds per minute from six rotating barrels and is also reported to have three 30mm CIWS, which seems equivalent to Gerald R. Ford's basic weaponry but lacking many more. The Type 003's conventional design and the inherent limitations it brings to the fore not only underscore China's technological lag in carrier capabilities but also reflect a broader strategic myopia. In contrast, the USS Gerald R. Ford stands as a testament to the United States' enduring commitment to maintaining its maritime supremacy through technological innovation and strategic foresight. This fundamental divergence in approach and capability between the two nations' carriers not only highlights the current disparities in naval power but also casts a long shadow over China's maritime ambitions, raising questions about the viability and longevity of its naval assets in the face of rapid technological evolution. Stark Contrast Between U.S. Naval Dominance and China's Precarious Path to Carrier Power The narrative of global naval power underscores the unparalleled role of aircraft carriers as potent instruments of warfare and deterrence. In this maritime arms race, the United States has maintained a clear lead over China, primarily due to its extensive operational experience and superior training regimes. The U.S. Navy has over 75 years of continuous aircraft carrier operations since World War II. The U.S. Navy also conducts over 100 carrier strike group exercises annually that realistically simulate complex warfare scenarios. This allows personnel to train under high-stress conditions. This pursuit of excellence, however, has not been without sacrifice. The United States has endured the loss of numerous pilots and deck crew, each incident serving as a critical learning point that has led to procedural improvements, technological advancements, and the establishment of best practices. These continuous enhancements have significantly reduced risks and boosted operational efficiency, further cementing the U.S.'s position at the forefront of carrier operations. And contrastingly, China's foray into carrier operations, though marked by rapid technological adoption and progress, lacks the depth and rigor of the U.S.'s century-long experience. China commissioned its first carrier Liaoning in 2012 and has only conducted limited training and tests in the past decade. Compared to the U.S., China has conducted only a handful of training missions with limited participants each year aboard Liaoning. China's strategy has largely been one of observational learning, attempting to shortcut its way to carrier proficiency by emulating the operational tactics and strategies of the U.S. Navy. Despite these efforts, China's carrier program is beleaguered by a significant experiential deficit, particularly in the complex and unforgiving realm of combat-ready carrier operations. China's technological strides, while notable, cannot compensate for the absence of real-world operational testing, especially under challenging conditions such as nighttime or adverse weather operations. The People's Liberation Army Navy remains unproven in the demanding environment of carrier warfare, where the intricate ballet of launch and recovery operations demands perfection and where even minor missteps can have catastrophic consequences. Not to mention, the U.S. Navy has extensive experience conducting carrier launch-slash-recovery operations at night and in challenging weather, with over 10,000 night landings recorded annually. China is still developing this capability and has not attempted night combat missions from its carriers. The disparity in operational experience and training depth between the U.S. Navy and the plan is profound. The U.S. has capability for all weather. 24 per 7 carrier operations reflects a training doctrine that relentlessly tests the limits of human and technological capacity, ensuring that U.S. carrier strike groups are versatile and combat ready under any circumstances. This exhaustive preparedness encompasses the intricate coordination of vast personnel and the flawless execution of complex maneuvers, skills that are deeply ingrained in the seasoned crews of the U.S. Navy. The Ford-class aircraft carrier is equipped with the Anperspy-3 multifunction radar, which is an active electronically scanned array radar designed for both blue water and littoral operations. It has a range of 200 miles, 320 kilometers, and is capable of tracking over 1,000 targets at distances up to 400 nautical miles. However, there is no detailed information available on the specific sensors and radars that will be used on the Type 003 aircraft carrier but expected to be less advanced. Both carriers feature electromagnetic aircraft launch systems, EMLs. 
The Ford system has undergone extensive testing while the Fujins is still in development stages. The Ford also has advanced arresting gear, AAG, for aircraft recovery while the Fujin is expected to have a traditional ski jump design. China's nascent training endeavors, though ambitious, fall short of replicating the high-tension atmosphere of actual combat operations. The unforgiving nature of carrier warfare, with its slim margins for error, underscores the importance of operational experience a domain where the United States retains a significant advantage. The rigorous, realistic training that simulates the unpredictability and chaos of combat is an area where China's carrier program is notably lacking. Assessing Naval Supremacy, the USS Gerald R. Ford vs. China's Fujian Carrier The essence of the Ford's superiority lies not just in its technological advancements but in the strategic and tactical doctrines it embodies, doctrines forged in the crucible of real-world operations and relentless training regiments. The Ford's nuclear propulsion, a marvel of engineering, affords it an unparalleled operational tempo, allowing it to dictate the pace and terms of engagement. Its ability to remain on station, far from logistical chains, for extended periods, grants the U.S. Navy a persistent, formidable presence, effectively extending its strategic reach and influence across the globe. The Ford's air wing, spearheaded by the stealthy and technologically advanced F-35C, is not merely a collection of aircraft but a cohesive, integrated combat system. These aircraft, with their unparalleled situational awareness and networked warfare capabilities, extend the Ford's eyes and ears far beyond the horizon, creating an asymmetric advantage in information warfare. This advantage allows the Ford to engage the Fujin and its accompanying assets at ranges where the Fujin's response would be limited or ineffective. Tactically, the Ford's MLs and AAG systems represent more than just technological advancements, they are force multipliers that enhance the sortie generation rate, ensuring air dominance is achieved and maintained. This capability is critical in the initial stages of any engagement, where control of the skies can dictate the outcome of the naval confrontation below. Moreover, the Ford's resilience in electronic warfare, bolstered by its advanced radar and sensor suites, ensures it can counter and overcome the electronic and cyber threats that are increasingly prevalent in modern naval warfare. This electronic shield not only protects the Ford and its strike group but also degrades the Fujin's ability to effectively target and engage, further tipping the balance in the Ford's favor. The qualitative edge of the Ford is further amplified by the U.S. Navy's operational and combat experience. The Ford's crew, seasoned through rigorous training and real-world deployments, possess a level of proficiency and cohesion that cannot be replicated overnight. This human element, when combined with the Ford's technological might, results in a platform that is not just superior in capability but unmatched in its ability to execute complex naval strategies and tactics under the stress of combat. Thus, in this theoretical engagement, the Ford's victory would not be a mere triumph of one ship over another but a demonstration of the cumulative advantages of technological superiority, operational endurance, strategic mobility, and combat experience. It's a testament to the enduring principle that in the realm of naval power, quality, experience, and strategic doctrine hold the keys to supremacy.